Hey guys, I've been getting uh, quite a few emails and especially on my YouTube moderator feature on my channel page, um, people are sort of asking, can you show us tips on new Mac users if you're new to a, Ma uh, new to a Mac, which I was a few uh, months ago, if you saw my video unboxing. Um, so um, I said, yeah, okay, I'll do it because people are asking for it. That's why we're here. So today I'm going to show you uh, the top five essential I'd call them essential, for me at least. Um, this may vary on person to person. But the top five essential free um, Mac apps or software. Uh, and also, I've got a couple of widgets that I've thrown in there for you. So, if you're new to a Mac, this is obviously your desktop. And um, the first app I have got for you, if you have seen um, my last video, it's called App Cleaner. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. But uh, you can go to Google and just type in AAPP and cleaner, obviously. It's one word, app cleaner. And uh, basically, th this is the easiest way to uninstall all your applications on a Mac. So, um, unfortunately, it's not that easy to uninstall applications on a Mac. Uh, but with this application, it's really, really easy to do. Uh, you pretty much select a application, um, for example, Adobe InDesign, and you hit search and then it finds all the files associated with that application or that piece of software and it has them all selected and then you can hit delete and it deletes all those files from your computer. Well, it, technically it puts them into your recycling bin uh, but once you empty that, they're gone for your, from your computer. So that's a really handy feature because most of the time when you uninstall file or uninstall software and applications on your computer, it does leave some temporary files behind, which you don't even know about. But uh, this application will look for all those files and get rid of it. So that that's my first um, essential app for new Mac users. So moving on, the next app that I have is called VLC Player. Um, most of you would have heard of it. It's a nice little orange witch's hat uh, logo, if you haven't seen it. You can just search VLC Player or VLC in Google and um, it should be pretty much the first link. So basically it's a player that can pretty much play most formats in the world, I'm not kidding. Um, especially if you're on a Mac and somebody sends you an AVI file or a file that only plays on a PC, VLC will play it on your Mac. Um, it handles so many different codecs, it's not funny. Um, if, it, if there's a codec that, you can't, that it doesn't handle, then uh, I'd say there's something wrong with that video, it might be a virus. But um, it handles so many different codecs. Um, QuickTime is great, don't get me wrong, QuickTime is great, but this is even better uh, for listening to music, playing tons of different video files, uh, AVI, WMV, MOV, MP4, uh, I can't even think, there's so many different, FLV, it plays flash files, all different sorts of files that I can't even think of right now. But uh, try it out, it plays so many different file types, you'll be surprised. Um, so that was a nice one for multimedia. Uh, the next one, um, pretty much keeping with the theme of VLC, uh, if you have any DVDs of your own which you would uh, like to rip onto your computer and put it onto any device, Handbrake is the option for you. This app uh, you can find on Google, just search Handbrake, just like in your car, you got a Handbrake, so that's what this is called. So you open it up, then um, once you have a DVD inserted, it will you can look for it, search for it, browse for it, and then once you have it selected, you can pretty much... Um, you can tell it what to output it as, like a iPhone format, MP4 format, all different formats, uh, and you can edit it through chapters, stuff like that. It's really great, um, and it's free, so nothing wrong with that. It's quick to do, slide in your DVD, that's it, very easy. So that's if you want to um, rip DVDs, but what if you want to make you know, free phone calls or chat with your friends? Now, there are things like, um, I think it's called Adium, which, which actually is pretty good. I don't need it because I don't ha use that many chat clients, but uh, that supports Yahoo chatting, AIM chatting, MSN, um, maybe even Facebook chatting, I'm not sure. But this chatty app, it really, it really supports a lot of different clients. So you could use that, 
or the alternative, which is what I use, is actually Skype. Now, many of you know Skype, and I mean, if you've been on a PC, you might have used it before. I have a lot of different friends here, and a lot of people, uh, family, friends, and a lot of people that just randomly add me. Now, the interface is really great for Skype. You can um, double click a person, you can add like a contact, you can set a topic for a chat, you can call them using audio, you can video call them, so with video and audio, it's, it's really personal, especially if you have friends or family around the world, it's really like you're kind of with them, you know, um, in the same room, you can have it full screen, and it's like they're really there. You can also share your desktop your full screen desktop or a selection so they can see what you see on your desktop. You can also um, send files and you can leave voicemails just like your your mobile phone. It's really great. You can uh, also as well as that you can also if you have any Skype credit which you obviously have to pay for you can make really dirt cheap calls around the world whether they're local or international landline mobile phone anything you can just pretty much uh, get the keypad up here and obviously once you have credit and then you can pick whatever country you're going to call so say I'm calling okay Australia for the this and then you know uh, the city it puts in the area the country code for you automatically and then you just type in the number depending on what it is and I do believe I'm not sure don't hold me to this but I do believe that um, if you sign up with your Skype account, you get a you get one free call uh, of credit. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's my uh, fourth uh, application for uh, new Mac users. The last one, if you actually do want to be productive, uh, why spend money on Office, Microsoft Office, which, mind you, yeah, not so great for the Mac. It's quite complicated. Um, Look, I didn't want to buy Office, and I still haven't, but I have um, Apple's version of Office, which is iWork, and they have their own version of PowerPoint, Word, and uh, Excel, which is uh, Pages, Keynote, and uh, Numbers, which I've used it so far, not that much, but I've used it. It's great. It's really, especially Keynote, which is the equivalent of PowerPoint uh, uh, for Office, it's just... Even the effects and everything that it comes with is so, so much more powerful and professional than uh, Microsoft Office. But uh, there is a free way to get around this. I said these applications would be free. There is a free way to get around this. OpenOffice.org. If you head over to OpenOffice.org, uh, download the application there. It's pretty much Microsoft Office uh, for your Mac or, or PC, but it's free. Um, it, do it does a great uh, job. Um, Look, it's got text document, which is your equivalent for Word. It's got uh, drawing, um, which I guess you could just draw around on. Uh, you can make databases, formulas. It even has presentation, which is the equivalent of um, PowerPoint or Keynote on the Mac. Uh, and it also has spreadsheets, so you can easily make spreadsheets like you would in Excel. So, look, you can make a presentation. I'll just quickly show you a random presentation. You can... Um, have templates just like you would in Office or Keynote. Uh, just for the sake of it, let's just go with this. Create. And it will pretty much create a template from scratch. And you can just... Oh. You can easily make different things, PowerPoints. Look, if, if, you're, if you don't use... <coughs> sorry. If you're in school or anything like that, and you're only using this, not very frequent, frequently, but you're just using it to jot down notes or um, make some Word documents, or even make a small presentation for your class, it's really great. It's free. It does everything that uh, that Keynote will do on your Mac. It does everything that Office will do on your Mac. Um, but if you're a professional, then you might not want to use it. You might want to spend that bit of extra money and um, buy Keynote because Keynote is really, really good um, compared to compared to uh, Microsoft Office for the Mac. And don't worry about compatibility if you're using Keynote and you want to do a presentation on a PC. You can export it as a um, as a Microsoft PowerPoint file, so it'll work on PCs. 
but a uh, keynote's much more professional and you can really wow your audience with uh, with iWork. I think it's very nice. So that's five uh, applications for your new Mac. Now, what about widgets? If you don't know what widgets are, there should be on your keyboard a small um, icon under F4. Uh, if you can see this, there's a small icon under F4, which is uh, pretty much a little sort of speedometer icon. So if you hit that, you will get this. Now, all these different sort of widgets on your uh, on your page. Now, obviously by default, you get the uh, weather widget, you get the calculator widget, um, the clock obviously, and you get the calendar widget. But I've added two on uh, for myself. You can actually hit this little plus icon down here, and then you can just either go to the web or, or and search for different widgets that you want. And trust me, there's hundreds of widgets out there. Or you can easily uh, just take one of these that they're, I guess, offering to you down here. But uh, I'm going to show you two that I have. The first one I have is called uh, the Currency Converter, I believe. The Yahoo Finance Currency Exchange, obviously. Uh, you can, there's so many different currency exchanges, but I'm just using this one. Um, so right now I've got the Australian dollar versus the US dollar, and as you can see, it's 88, uh, for 88 cents, which is uh, quite good. It's gone up a bit recently. Um, also, this uh, widget down here, which I really like, is called uh, iStat Pro. A I S A T uh, iStat I S T A T sorry Pro, and uh, it's it's very easy to use. It gives you your Look, if you're a nerd or geeky and you really want to know what your computer's doing inside behind you while you're not looking, this is a really great uh, widget. It'll give you your CPU usage, uh, your memory usage, uh, how full your hard drives are, uh, your network, um, the temperature of the actual laptop, how hot it's getting. As you can see, mine's 30 degrees Celsius at the moment, my um, hard drive. My CPU is 60 degrees Celsius at the moment, which is quite hot. Uh, it's hotter than the showers that I even have. Uh, you can see the exhaust, the fans, uh, how fast they're spinning at the moment. And you can also, if you're obviously, if you're not on a desktop and you're using a laptop, you can see your battery and uh, the charge cycles and uh, 40 charge cycles I have right now. And uh, you can see how good it's doing. Um, here's a little tip though, which I just found out. According to Apple, if you go over 300 charge cycles, your battery is not covered by the warranty, even Apple Care. So try and keep it plugged in for as long as you can, um, because if you go over 300 charge cycles, which should take you quite a while to do, um, but then they, if you, yeah, if your battery dies after 300 charge cycles, they will not replace it for you. So uh, that's pretty much it. Five apps and two widgets that should get you started. So I'll see you later, guys, and uh, hope you enjoy your new Mac. Bye.